Hey, we've been working on it for about four weeks trying to get this floor pan in. We finally finished it today. If you're interested in seeing this last little part about getting a new floor pan in the Tri-5 Chevy from 1956, fully welded, fully installed, ready to go, stay tuned. Welcome to Restoring Christine, where we're restoring a 1956 Chevy Bel Air, my, my garage, with my hands, all do it yourself. Pick up where we left off from the last couple of videos. So where we're at now in the project is we're getting ready to slide in the, the floor pan. So I've got a couple of three videos that are out there that have us uh, prepping it, getting it ready. Um, it's, it's about ready to slide in. I've got a little bit of repair work to do now. So let me show you. I brought the floor pan back from the warehouse. It's, it's ready to go. I've got my passenger side rocker panel I've ordered the driver side rocker panel because I discovered I needed to replace that okay. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip this pan in and weld it along the tow board at the back two rear wheel welds along the two rear fenders and then I'll after I get that in then I'm gonna cut out the rocker panel and put them on both sides you might remember in the last video when I was cutting out all the floor beams getting it ready uh, one of the cuts that I made right in front of the in front of the axle tunnel was uh, the pinion snubber. The pinion snubber was was um, welded on the back side of it, and I didn't see it, so I cut it out. Um, I actually ha accidentally cut through it, so I've I've already repaired the welds. I repair I'm, I'm, not the welds. I've repaired the cuts. So I had a cut here, and I had a cut on the other side, and and I, I've repaired those. So now this thing has been cleaned up. I got 65 years worth of gunk off of it. Cleaned it, primed it, painted it, pre-drilled it with some spot weld holes. So there's one, two, three, four on the bottom flange, one, two in the top, both sides ready to go in. I also recovered my parking brake mechanism, and that was on this beam. This is the, the beam that's right in front of the rear, um, in front of the rear seat. So it's it was bolted. They had one through bolt here, one through bolt here, one side bolt side bolt so it's a basically one one to remove here one to remove here one to remove here one to remove here and the whole thing comes out took a little bit of heat a little bit of lubrication but it came off i've got i recovered all the all the hardware so the <laughs> 65 years these bolts have never been broken free and there they are so let's take a look at the car i pointed out last video that i have corrosion here in this corner Corrosion in that corner and the tick on the tow board. And I've got to repair this. But this is, I thought this was going to be easy. But no, it's a little bit more complicated than I thought because this is a, a concealed pocket in here. And there's a whole bunch of things that come together. You'll see it on the other side. There, so let me show you that on the outside. This is where the cowl, this is where the cowl comes down. And down at the bottom here. So the cowl you can see has a piece that's here that splices in with the firewall. So there's a seam here. And that overlaps the uh, something that's concealed because here's the inside of the rocker panel and you can see this corrosion right here. And my, my finger's going in. I don't think the light's picking it up. But um, I need to patch that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut this out, remove that, patch that, patch the floor, weld a new flange on and then put this back so that's the plan on this side let's see on the that's the driver's side so let's see the passenger side the passenger side's kind of similar it's actually worse you can see daylight all the way through it uh, so I'll have to do that too I'll have to cut this off patch that behind it and then make a patch for the for the tow board and this flange to receive the floor pan so that's where we're at. That's what we're getting ready to do. Um, got a lot of work cut out for me now. So I'm working on this. It's a Saturday. I'm I'm picking at it. I'm going to get it prepped as much as I can. I don't think I'm going to slide the pan in today. I'll probably slide it in tomorrow. We'll see. I think that's a lot of repair work that I have to do there. So that'll probably take me the, whole, the better part of the day. And then maybe tomorrow I can come back and slide the pan in, weld it along the sides that are permanent, 
which means everything except for the two rocker panels. And then the next project will be to replace the two rocker panels. So that's where we're at. Stick around and see, see how this goes. Well, another place we've got to repair on the inside of the car is back here at this passenger side. The rocker panel comes back to here, comes back to the, to the end of the door. And I'm going to, this is going to be, get replaced with the fender. So the fender, the inner fender, has a lip right here. When I did this project on the passenger side, I forget which video this was. This um, might have been video 16. I'll, I don't know. Whichever one it is, I'll put a little, little clip up to it. But I made this, this tray that replaced the inner fender, and that's where the floor pan is going to splice against. And you can see here's the new fender. So the fender continues the rocker panel. So when I replace the rocker panel, I'm going to make that patch. Or that splice, I should say. And then when I put the floor pan in, the inner rocker panel will allow me to weld this tight. That's what I've got to do over here. So I don't have the outer fender yet replaced, but I'm going to replace this inner tray. So that's one more thing we're going to have to do today. I wanted to show you this. I haven't, I haven't gone over anything like this before in any of my videos, but fiberglass. And this is a, this is a piece of fiberglass. I just started to pry it away. So it was like this. And I started to pick at it, and I picked at it with a chisel. I just want to show you what fiberglass can, can, can conceal. Look. I mean, that's, that's the piece of fiberglass. Okay, so they patched it. Whoever did this car before me, this is maybe 20, 30 years ago, I don't know. And they saved it, you know, give, give them credit. They saved the car from being, uh, you know, scrapped. So kudos for that. But you can see there's big holes here, you know. Um, so we're going to go back with metal. I'm going to have to cut this all the way back to here. And I'm going to make a, make a tray. i got a metal brake I'm going to use to do that. So anyway, but I did want to show you, you know, what happens when you patch with fiberglass. That's what it ends up coming out looking like. And this is what you're hiding. You know, the corrosion continues. I can probably promise you that was more corroded. That's more corroded now than it was when they started with this fiberglass. But... We're not doing this in fiberglass, we're doing this in metal. So let's get after it. All right, we got this one done. I had to run this one up three inches. Here, I overlapped it. If you saw the other video when I did the other fender behind me, um, this is overlapped so that the outside edge where the water comes, water comes through the window, if it comes in there, it's gonna run down the back side of this panel and won't run into this panel. It'll, it'll overlap and it'll drip, drip in this cavity. Um, I welded it solid back here. It's ugly, but who cares? Um, I, I patched the, the fender well. It had a, a strip here. There's a splice. I can't tell what's going on here, but it's like multiple layers on the other side. So I had something to weld at the back to it. I had trouble blowing through, so I ended up using my cop backing pad to, to do this weld. But this corner's done. Now i got to turn my attention over to the kick panel.
there for a second. Show you what I did. I made this plate, and if you've watched my videos, um, you've seen how I, I make this kind of stuff. So I cut one piece, tack welded it on the top, grinded it to suit this shape, took, cut another piece, bent it around here, tack welded it, turned it over, welded it up, flipped it, welded it again, grind, grind, and it's beautiful. Thank you, Fitzy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's kind of, uh, that's an adaptation of the stuff that he does. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out, weld that in. That'll take care of this piece. And again, I've got the damage on the outside, uh, but I think that's gonna have to be like one patch and then a separate patch on the backside. So let's get this cut out, weld it in, and that'll be this, most of this corn. Got it. I'm liking it. It looks good. I mean, it's <laughs> it's underneath the it's the tow board. It's underneath the carpet. <laughs> you got a wheel well over there. Nobody's gonna see this. But I mean, that's that's solid compared to what it was. I mean, what I cut out of there was a mess. You saw it. Where'd it go? I don't know where my piece went. Oh, there it is. So you know, from that to that. I don't like it. So let's turn our attention over here now. Do the same thing. Here we go. Right, that's the other side. Came out pretty good. Pretty straightforward. All this stuff that's hidden. You know, I mean, this is a little bit warped. But I mean, it's like, it'll, it'll straighten out when I lay it down. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and cut this out, just like we did the other side, weld it in. And this side will be done, except for the back side on the firewall, so. We're getting there.
done. That one came out good. Maybe a little bit more grinding here, but not much. It's getting it's getting dark in here. I can't really see very much. Um, camera's actually making up for my lack of light, but it's gonna fit. You know, I mean, if you gotta have some persuasion too, when I bring the floor pan in here and the floor pan here is you gotta bang this. I mean, this is nobody sees this. So, but now it's solid, man. It was you know a mess. This thing, you know, it was junk. So. There's a couple of braces on the other side of the firewall. I think you saw it here. I had to put some spot welds. And then on the other side, there was also a brace there. And I had to put a, put a couple of spot welds there. But this is going to do it for today. <laughs> I'm tired. Man, I was just trucking along. I tell you what, you know what? Doing these videos and having the camera going, I mean... It just keeps you rocking. <laughs> you know, you don't want to stop. You don't want to, you don't want to, uh, you know, pause. You just want to keep on trucking. So, man, it's just, you know, it's, it's motivation. So that's, that's good. But anyway, so it's the end of the day today. Um, I still have a little bit more work to do with the two wheel wells. Not much. I think the work that I need to do in the firewall, now that I'm looking at it, probably can be done after I put the, the, the floor pan in. So that's probably what I'll do. Um, if I can get a hall pass tomorrow, <laughs> if I can get another garage pass tomorrow, we're going to put that pan in. So, um, anyway, but I will see you tomorrow. Back at it. Good morning. It's a great day outside. The sun is up. Temperatures are beautiful. It's really comfortable. Great day to be, be doing something other than working in the garage, but you know me. I love working in the garage, so that's what we're going to continue doing. I promised I was going to put that floor in today, and I'm this close. So let me show you where we're at this morning. So I came in this morning, and um, I went ahead and I, I lightly sanded with the grinder uh, flap disc on that flange on the tow board, and I primed that so that the, the seam, when I weld it, it'll, be, uh, it'll have coating on both sides and help for corrosion over there. I cleaned up and primed the flange that I made yesterday. I cleaned up the wheel well and primed that. I got that cut all the way back to where the trunk is going to uh, splice in when we get to it. Did the same thing on the driver's side. Got that all cleaned up. Got this fender, this flange on the inside fender, sanded down and primed. So that's good to go. So we're getting really close. Uh, this morning I'm going to go over a few more things and uh, show you what we're doing, but I got my son is going to help me today slide this pan in and uh, Hopefully it goes in and it fits. We'll see Hang around Let's take a quick look at the floor pan as we're trying to figure out where we're going to do spot welds so along the tow board This flange is going to be underneath the car the one that's on the tow board is forward of this, so it's at the firewall. So what I'm going to do is along that entire face on the tow board of the car, I'm going to punch. And we're going to weld through the tow board into the face of this floor pan. <clears throat> so it's easier on the passenger side here to see because I've got this uh, rocker panel sitting here. So as you, you know, I'm going to replace both the rocker panels. I'm going to replace them after I put the floor in. So... I will punch holes where the rocker pan goes, rocker panel, which is from the tow board to where the fender starts. It's basically the door sill. I'm going to punch that later. So we're not going to punch that. I've got the flange inside of the car that comes here. So I can't get to the back side of that. It's blocked. I have to punch here. So I will punch holes along this flange. This curve is not the same exact shape as the wheel well so i can't go around the wheel well and punch holes and know that it's going to be on this surface but this surface will absolutely always be on some part of the wheel well so i'm going to have to climb underneath the car to weld this i'll punch holes along this flange so that's this side this here at the fender on the car the tow board and we'll do that on both sides so that's how we're gonna punch this up. All we're gonna do now is just do it. <laughs> so here we go. So let me show you today's tool tip. 
So today I'm going to be using an air puncher flanger that I got from Harbor Freight. I've had this for a number of years. This is a pneumatic tool. Uh, it takes a little bit of pressure to drive it, but any compressor will drive it. It's got zero, almost next to no airflow that it requires. Um, on a factory body, when they're connecting two seams, they have a pinch weld machine that basically is a big old vise that pinches, and they, when they run current through it, it fuses the two pieces of metal together. So those are the spot wells that we've been drilling out. Um, what we're going to do is, what you can do is you can take a quarter inch or a three sixteen inch drill bit and drill through one piece of metal, get the two side by side, and then you just fill in the little hole. Or you can use this little punch tool. And I love this little tool because it's quick and easy. You can take a piece of metal and just real quick. Six holes like that in what, 10 seconds? I mean, you're going to wear yourself out with a drill, <laughs> so go invest in one of these. <clears throat> what we'll do is now that you got that punched, you take the other piece of metal that you're mating it against and just fill in the gap. Fill in the gap all the way down, and that'll get it welded together. One thing that we have to do is this bracket. There's a bracket on two sides. The punch will only go through sheet metal, so this is heavier gauge, and this so this this one have to be hand drilled. So I'll have to drill this out, um, and there were some other spots over here that had some things in the way, so I'll have to hand drill those. But you can see now I've got all the holes punched, and they, you know, if you had to drill that, I mean, I don't know what is that, <laughs> 20 minutes, and then a couple of drill bits. So I'm sure you're gonna break one or two, or or whichever, but I've got a, um, it, it got a little bent over here, so I'm going to straighten that out and drill a few holes. So I'm going to go back to the floor and continue punching the rest of it, and then I'm going to slide it in place, and then let's see if we can't get this thing lifted up. You ready? <laughs> I know I am. Got the pan underneath the car, got my uh, strapping system, my ratchet system ready to go. Kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing here. So you can see I've got one of the seat bolts in. I've got a ratchet strap up to the A, a post, A pillar. Same thing on this side. On the back, I'm going through the little square hole up to the top beam. Same thing, going up here to the roof. So I got four ratchet straps. Load's pretty balanced. And we're just going to lift it up in place like this. So here we go. I got it close. I just ran out of strap. Oh God! I've got everything's blocked up. All four of the straps have all have all bunched up. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to temporarily hold it up. I'm gonna have to pull the straps loose and uh, and get me some some more clearance at each one of these four <laughs> bundles. So hang on while I do that. All right, what I was talking about <laughs> was this. You know this the. Uh, the strap it was so long before and i lifted it so much that it wound up wound up and it filled this up so i took two four jack stands uh two on both sides lifted it back up unfurled it put it back started tightening them again now we're gonna lift it up Mostly there. I gotta close this gap. I gotta bring bring the floor forward a little bit. My piece that I made here might have a little bit of a long tail. I might have to cut that out of the way a little bit. I'm not sure yet. Um, my two flanges back here look a little wide. So I'm gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and see if I can't pull this in, and I'll show you once I get it completely snugged up because this is gonna be tedious. Here we go. All right, it's in. It is in, it is in, it is in. So I got a little bit of fitment issues over there on that rocker panel. I don't know what's going on there, but it's got a little bit of a gap. 
So the, the width between the doors here is wider than what the pan is. Surprisingly, my two flanges are the right width. So now what I have to do is weld it up, but it's, it's in. Just weld all the spot welds and there it'll be. That's what we're doing now. Almost finished. Last one. Whew. That's it. Done. It is in. Oh, man. We got it. <laughs> Have I said this before? This is tiring. <laughs> so there it is. Complete. Got it welded all at the tow board. Don't yet have the two rocker panels welded up because I'm going to change those. I got it welded at the two fenders, got it welded at the rear bulkhead, got it welded on the two wheel wells too underneath. That was tough because I had to do that from underneath the car. But man, <laughs> that brings us to the end of another episode. So thank you for watching. If, you, if you're enjoying the channel, please give us a subscription. If you're enjoying the videos, give us a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. If you have any questions, please ask. I, 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 I love to help. So um, if you're thinking about doing this floorboard, <laughs> that's maybe like, I don't know, what, seven, eight days worth of labor? Maybe six? I don't know, something like that. But it was, it was worth it. I think it's definitely worth it. So hope you learned something. Hope it's helpful. Tune in to us next time. We'll be back soon. Cheers.